There were about 34 guys that got together on February 18th of 1915 and they kind of got themselves together and they got $100 shares and, and stocks like and that was actually the start of it. Those 34 guys I think put money together or whatever. At that time there was not even an elevator here that was a farmer's co-op or anything. There were two other elevators in town, and I think they were on the Burlington line off to the west here. And uh, then about two or three months later, they got together. They were going to buy the, one of those, you know, but they got together and they voted that they're going to build their own elevator. So shortly after that, they, they built the one elevator and that uh, held 33,944 bushels cost nine thousand dollars. Back when I started here and David City Co-op went under, Gene Starr was a uh, general manager then and and him and I got together and said we're gonna buy it which was very scary because David City was bigger than Brainerd was at that time and he went around and did the legwork while I kind of took care of the local business here while he was gone and he put it together and and we bought David City for a million and a half dollars which a lot of people think we stole it but for Brainerd at that time was a lot a lot of money. When the co-op years ago the co-op used to be a old wooden elevator a lumber a lumber yard was probably the biggest part of it which now all that stuff is gone and it's grown and evolved into a major market for our grain and and products that we that we use uh, uh, I, I know just uh, the aesthetics of the co-op has changed so much it, it's so much more pleasing to stop at and look at as you drive by uh, and as people that visit our community see they've they've cleaned it up and managed it uh, very well i i grew up on a farm and i i just couldn't see myself going sitting in a factory or something like that working there and i uh, being working at the co-op here is about the closest thing as you can get to being a farmer and i i just had farming in my blood and it was fun. I mean, sure, you worked hard, but what job don't you work hard at? <laughs> well, uh, I farm for a living. I'm a corn soybean producer. Used to raise livestock, but don't do that anymore. But the co-ops are important to me. Uh, we have on-farm storage, but 
we don't have near enough for what we produce. Uh, we need a place to take our um, produce, soybeans, corn, to market. Uh, the co-op is excellent. They store our grain, they ship it out, either rail or by truck, and uh, excellent, excellent investment. If you're a farmer, you need to belong to the co-ops. They do a good job. Uh, you get a patronage uh, refund at the end of the year. Uh, you're investing in your own future. Uh, they cater to the, the community they live in. We all have kids in school or grandkids. Uh, they do their best to see that everybody has a good way of life and the co-op's a good, good system. Um, the facilities have changed. They've gotten, everything's gotten bigger. Um, everything's now big trucks and everybody wants to go faster and quicker. Uh, being able to dump the semi in probably about 10-15 minutes beats dumping uh, in a smaller smaller elevator which usually takes a half an hour. Co-ops, uh, they give us a, an outlet for our grain so we don't have to go sit in ADM in line for three or four hours some days and some days you can go right through. Um, I think it's more important to be able to have time for yourselves and for your kids and uh, attend other stuff than sitting in line all the time. I think, I think the growth that, that uh, they've undergone since I've been farming has been great. You know, the new, the new bins over at the, over at the elevator, the two new scales has really sped everything up, you know, a lot. A lot more effective getting in and out a lot quicker, you know, um, at the chem shed, everything is, is much quicker, everything is nice and smooth over there. And yeah, I mean, yeah, every, the growth has been, been great. I think Frontier Co-op does a good job at keeping up with uh, the way the farming is going and having their machine machines updated, whether it be their anhydrous applicators, variable rate machines. Um, they do keep a good job at updating so they can provide the needs for the farmers. Frontier always has treated us very, very well. They take care of us. Um, they're a full service co-op. Everything I need um, from start to finish the growing season, they do take care of me. It's uh, my one-stop shop for everything. Last summer, I was a associate trainee working in the Frontier Co-op location at David City. And uh, when we started to get the aerial operation uh, in plan and uh, seeing what new service we could provide to our owners, which are the producers in this area. Uh, the plant health piece for the corn fungicide and the soybean fungicide is an ever-evolving industry and it's something that farmers are really requesting and it's a service that they uh, really want to have with their local cooperative. Uh, most of these products are applied by the air and aerial applied um, and that's something that uh, Frontier Co-op didn't have any experience with in the past and I've had problems getting service um, from an aerial applicator to service our customers. So what we did as uh, Frontier Co-op as well as Winfield is uh, come up with a plan that we could partner in and build an aerial application facility here at the Wahoo Airport um, so that we can service those acres. They spray fungicide on our corn um, to keep the fungus away, you know, and, and have better stock quality. Uh, they just put two new planes into their uh, uh, program out of Wahoo, Nebraska, and so they're very close. It's very time, can, time on, and, and they do a great job. The co-op has to keep growing to, I mean, keep up with the times just as the same as what everybody else as farmers are doing. You know, everything we do has to be faster, you know, we want to cover more acres, so the co-op has to be able to get us more product faster. Same as when we're harvesting, you know, we're going to bring them crops faster. They have to be able to take everything faster to just help out with us. You know, if, if they don't improve, then we, in a sense, don't improve. You know, back in four years ago, we had a lot of wet corn, and it was really slow, and the next year they improved by putting up some new dryers to really speed things up. They really adapt to the needs every year. The foreign markets and that, those people demand product and, and it's supposed to be delivered on time and uh, it also I think makes, makes it more efficient uh, with the large scale loader and uh, the 100 car unit trains uh, to be able to get that done. Uh, 
these developing markets, when, when they need the grain, they want it uh, right away. Well, the rail markets for Frontier are very important because it gives us flexibility with what our markets are. We're not just locked into the local truck markets, but we can basically send our grain worldwide. Uh, Frontier has five shuttle train loaders that can load trains, uh, 100 to 110 cars, in a matter of uh, under 15 hours. This gives our grain access, like I said, to the world. We can export to Mexico, or we can ship to the Pacific Northwest, where it'll get loaded on a vessel to go overseas. The, being able to work with the grain, it encompasses the entire company. Uh, not all of our facilities have agronomy, not all of our facilities have feed, but every Frontier facility in, in some way is affecting the grain and, that, and that's the side that I work on. So in, in a roundabout way I'm working with every producer that, that is a member of Frontier Co-op. Um, and it's a lot of fun during harvest to see these people come across the scale. Uh, if they've got their children in the truck with them, so that that's what's enjoyable. We have uh, through Frontier, we do a lot of our grain marketing. We do all our fall fertility programs. Uh, all our soil analysis are done with Frontier. Uh, a high percentage of our seed purchases are done with Frontier. Uh, Frontier has a very good program as far as. Uh, having individuals that are really knowledgeable to uh, as far as placement of our seeds on different soil types on our farm and so I have a lot of faith in their judgment. When putting together a complete farm plan for a grower it's important as we go through the season and we start out with grid sampling and we're able to get those results and go over them with you the grower on each individual acre that you have to have the equipment to be able to put on the prescription of either fertilizer, seed, or whatever it is that we need for your acre. What Frontier did in the last year is purchased an air machine that's capable of putting on four products at once, variable rating them across the field as you go through. It's really important that we can do this so that we can put on either potash, phosphate, or lime, whatever it is that we need exactly precisely on that acre. The best reward is you know you go throughout this growing season of putting the seed in the ground and planting and, and spraying and watching that crop uh, grow and stuff and then when we get to harvest uh, seeing the big reward of a good harvest is, is the one thing that I really like about this job is you know when riding in the combine talking to that farmer when he's got good yields and stuff and, and things are going good it's uh, really rewarding makes me uh, want to get up and do my job every day. We felt at Frontier that it was important to start offering some energy products such as E85 and the blender pumps in David City and E15 to help show our support for agriculture. It's meant a lot of jobs to our area and it's just a really important part of our, our trade territory. Put in a new system three, four years ago, Agris Energy, which uh, regulates degree days, so the usage everybody uses on their keep full tanks. Uh, it took about four years to get started, and it, it helps on uh, doing my routes. I, I ain't driving out of the way. I can stop and do one area with one truckload, and it saves time, fuel, and more efficient. They're just, the guys at the co-op are just so fun to be around and down to earth. They come over and take our orders. We sit out here, we laugh, we have a beer, it, you know, and it's just so easy to talk to them and easy to get along, and they just make doing business with them very, very easy. The I believe in the future of ag campaign has been tremendous for our chapter. Um, Frontier Cooperative is one of our corporate sponsors and they've done wonders to help advertise for this campaign, um, also to draw attention um, and to help support our chapter. What this campaign does is that people who donate their money, it will be matched by the Nebraska FFA Foundation and all of it comes back to our chapter. Um, our plans for using this money, we're going to a uh, chapter greenhouse um, and also supporting a few leadership conferences in Washington. Um, all of these, all of this money comes back to the chapter in the community in many ways, uh, whether it's developing new leaders or um, 
just going back to our community members through the greenhouse. Um, FFA is important to me because it's opened my eyes to the agricultural industry. Um, it's gotten me involved with different equine science projects, what I can do in my future, and how I can help my community. It's taught me that I not only working with animals, but I can go and work with different industries and be successful in the agricultural industry. Um, we started working with Frontier Co-op actually over the summer. We worked with them at the fair, um, Butler County Fair. Uh, we helped with uh, run a few contests and we also rode on their float in the parade. Um, and that was amazing. It was just awesome how well they supported us and how they helped us get involved more. Um, also in the future we're planning on having a career fair for the junior high kids um, and Frontier is uh, graciously coming down to help advertise for themselves and to teach youth about uh, the importance of agriculture. Uh, we also have Feed the Farmer. Uh, that was huge for us. Feed the Farmer, we've done it in the past, but we've never had the opportunity to specifically partner up with Frontier Cooperative to do that. But there's so many members um, and people who go to Frontier Co-op that support David City Agriculture, so it was just an opportunity for us to give back to them uh, with a small lunch. So. You know, I probably touch base with a Frontier Co-op employee on a weekly basis asking for something, uh, and I do always receive. So uh, whether that's uh, somebody coming into my classroom, me taking a group of students out, uh, ideas for uh, speeches, uh, they provided me with judges for our district contests. Uh, the partnership is is um, an, ag an ag program cannot survive without community partnerships. And so I'm fortunate enough to be able to rely on the employees over at Frontier. Like for us here, we make a lot of show feeds for the youth and their 4-H projects, you know, and we're big supporters in that because it it's getting harder to keep people around the area, you know, so it's good that we keep the young people interested and involved in agriculture so you know that they want to come back after they graduate college and and take over the farm and I guess we're just trying to promote that here. Um, we've brought together two very financially sound and stable companies and both companies have served the area farmers for many years and I think we'll continue to do that even better now that we've combined into one big company. Well I was around when when uh, Mead was just a Mead co-op and merged with you know and then it became Frontier. There was a lot of people against it, uh, some people for it. Um, it merged, it got bigger, it got better, our crops have gotten better and more bushels and there's more things going in there and without that I don't think we'd be where we're at to be able to dump our load and, and be able to get our grain in in a timely matter. Um, as far as the merger, uh, you know, I can only think it can be as good as with the last one. So as long as they have the right person running it, I think it'll be a great thing. I think it will just be better for Frontier and Husker to be combined. I, I, I can see great things happening in the in the Husker locations. You're going to see margins get tighter. You're going to see more consolidation. Um, by merging together, hopefully our kids will um, be members of a farmer-owned co-op instead of a national or a regionalized co-op. And that was probably the main reason for merging was just to uh, position us for the future. Both boards work very hard to be fair, both to the Frontier Board and to or the Frontier shareholders as well as the Husker shareholders. Um, we worked with some retirement programs, uh, retiring old equities. Their policies were different than ours and we're gonna adopt their policies which will help with our retirement of old equity. And as Randy really likes to uh, express you'd like to have the shareholders be the younger generation to the next generation so uh, they realize they have a little skin in the game as it were you know if they buy from the co-op that the co-op will be there to be healthy you know they'll benefit from patronage at the end of the year and then when they turn uh, 65 years old or 62 years old it's a policy 65 years old that they will receive the second half of their patronage that is deferred 
The cooperative system is here for rural America. This is the only voice that the agriculture, that the farmer has today is the co-op system. We are constantly with the co-op council and stuff like that in the, in the state unicameral and in Washington, D.C. to fight for the American producer. Your co-op is there day in and day out doing that for you. And I want to thank you all for understanding that, seeing that, and supporting that. Thank you very much. Thank you.